design. For me, even Canva, you know, Adobe is another level after Canva, but even for that Canva, there were a lot of tears. I will be honest that I shed real tears, real tears in the middle of the night, just trying to get everything right. And my first poster, I remember our VPE who was kind of, our current VPE was also doubling up, doubling up as VPPR last year. And he told me, just send me the link out of frustration. He's like, send me the link. I'll do it myself because my first poster was that bad. But I got to pick myself up and uh, dust myself off and lick my wounds. With lots and lots of practice, I've been able to just create something from scratch. And I'm very happy that uh, the feedback I got last month by being second runners up has kept me inspired and motivated to continue on this journey. So one of my challenges is the time it takes. I hear Madam Fear manager saying it gets better with time. And it's quite interesting to hear someone saying they even have templates because I tried the template approach but every time the TMOD of the day gives their theme, I find that my template is not in line with the theme or I try to, you know, put some backgrounds that resonate with the theme. So I end up just doing things from scratch. But I think having a template, as has been explained by one of us, is a good way to save on time because all you have to do is just add the picture and the theme. So generic templates are something I'm really looking forward to trying in the interest of those weeks that we are probably burning the candle from both sides. So very happy to be here. I'm going to just start by sharing the screen on what uh, our agenda for the meeting is today. I believe a majority of us have introduced themselves, but if you haven't, please do so by at least indicating across your name, just against your name, which VPPR, which club you represent as VPPR and the country. And also, while we're at that, I'm going to share a link to our moodometer. This is just an exercise to see how we are doing, how we are feeling about the past week, how we are feeling about the past month, so that uh, it can set the tone of how we proceed. So just in a minute, I'll share my screen. And even as I do that, I would like to introduce uh, a lady who most of us know, a phenomenal PR guru, Madam Mary Mutano Gitari, uh, who is the one who makes sure we have all the resources we need. She makes sure we all understand our role and she helps us whenever we have challenges. Madam Mary, uh, over to you just for your introduction and perhaps to introduce our tip session master uh, who is going to take us through how to get around Canva. Madam Mary. Everyone, everyone, Hello, Vivian. I'm sorry, I had uh, logged on on two devices so that in case my internet drops, I'm able to access this meeting. It's very important to me. Um, I'm still en route, so I'll be settled in a few minutes, but uh, I want to just say how happy I am to see everybody who has joined this call. I'm happy that we are more than two. <laughs> because it's usually such a 
you know, it's a it's an act of faith when you create a training program and you hope that people come in and join. So today, please strap in and make sure that you're listening in. We have a very special guest who's giving us our tip session. Someone who has been in the VPPR uh, trenches with us and who has been also the district PR manager um, before me. So I really am standing on the shoulders of giants because Angelina Gunje is our tip session master for today. And she is going to be sharing with us how to navigate Canva. I love that we already have people who use Adobe and all the other amazing tools. She also has a really strong design background and she's going to be sharing with us some of the basics, how to make sure that we are communicating the thing we need to communicate with templates, without templates, but we just have those basic rules. So I'll be sharing with you some updates from the district after when my turn comes. For now, I want us to really engage with uh, Vivian and uh, make sure that we give her all the hype that we can. Um, yeah, so back to you, Vivian, and I hope that you feel comfortable and at home in this place. This is your safe space. This is a safe space for all of us with PPR so that we can just learn how to navigate this uh, journey. Yeah, so we want to, the, the purpose of this forum is to share with each other the resources that are available to each other, to us. <laughs> we share resources, we share tips, uh, we share frustrations, those hot tears. I have also cried them in the middle of the night. <laughs> so I understand completely how we feel when the pressure is mounting up. So let this be part learning, part therapy session. And um, of course, the last thing is to award the poster of the month. So don't exit until you see who the winner for the September poster of the month challenge was. Uh, so back to you, Vivian, and really happy with how this is going. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Tanu. I hope everyone has seen the link in the chat box, and I hope that you're feeling in your mood, how your mood has been because we are going to share that even as we proceed. I can't see any responses, but you can also use the code that is on the screen and keep on filling in your answers as we go. Also introducing yourself within the chat box, indicating your name and which club you represent as VPPR. I'm still waiting for your responses, but even as I wait for your responses, I would just like to share in one word how my week has been, <laughs> let's say the month. Oh my goodness, the one word I would use is overwhelming, but I have used the one day at a time mantra. And this has really helped me because just taking each task one, day one moment at a time has been quite instrumental in making me manage all the overload from work, all the overload from my role as a VPPR. I don't know how many of you sometimes find yourself seeing that you have two days to go to your next meeting and you've not done the PR that you need to do, you've not shared on your socials, you've not shared on the WhatsApp and everyone is giving you pressure about changing something or changing the photo, or changing the theme or changing the format, yet your boss is also asking for a report and it's like all your balls are in the air. And I don't know how many of you perhaps have a family, maybe other social demands, and they're also all in the air and how you've managed that. But for me, it's been overwhelming, but I would say that taking it one day at a time has helped me to be able to navigate all the demands that, that I have. I see Tracy's hand is up. Tracy, please go ahead. 
Just a question. How yes. do we fill in our responses on this on the on the link? Is it not working? It okay. So, so I think it was just a loading problem. Okay. Just wait for Sorry it to load a little that. longer and then Yes. I hope not all of you are having challenges still. In the meantime, I'm just going to share so that we can all see the results in person. There's someone who has said I opening. Amazing, wow. Lovely. Festive, I wonder what we were celebrating. Whoever said festive, I'm really interested in hearing what all the festivities were about. Please unmute and share. Hi, good evening, everybody. Good evening. So I am Hewitt from uh, Ethiopia. So in Ethiopia, September 11 is a new year, 2017. We had uh, <laughs> one festivity week I, I think two weeks ago and now just the past week we had a celebration that is called uh, the finding of true cross day we call it mascal so yeah uh, the festivity continues oh that's interesting i've never heard about mascal no. Thank you for yeah never so it's really mm. nice to hear about Ethiopia and these festivities. For us, I think September doesn't really have any big festive session in Kenya. So I'm yeah. very happy to hear that Ethiopia was in a festive mood. Welcome yeah. to this Thank meeting. You. Yeah. Thanks. I see someone said stretching, stretching. How did you stretch or what made you stretched? In this past week and month. Please unmute and share. Well, it is just like you said, there are tears to be cried. Although the same, I cried upwards like Oprah advised. I had a lot going on at work. I had a lot pulling me on the side of my role. And as my normal self kept telling me to just run away. I decided to just stick through, allow myself to be stretched. And funny enough, I completed every single one of my role in flying colors. So yes, I'm more relaxed and I'm more of a conqueror than I was last month. <laughs> Back to you. Wow, I love that more than a conqueror. I think the beauty of flowing with the punches, or is it going with the punches, is what makes us stronger. And kudos for going through all those things and still being able to achieve all your goals, achieve all your demands in flying colors. Well done, Tracy. There's someone who said insightful. How insightful was this month for you? If you said insightful, please unmute and share your experience from the past week or month that made you uh, summarize your week and month as insightful. Say that this month I was able to properly grasp all the tasks that I needed to do as a VPPR especially when it comes to social media content, I was really struggling with just being consistent. Okay, so far I've only made about three posts, but it was clear what I need to do in order to be more consistent, which is more of preparing a content calendar ahead of time. So it was insightful. Well done, one boy. Content calendar, content calendar. 
I can raise my hand up if anyone asked me if I'm having any challenges. There are weeks that I'm blank completely, like I don't know anymore what to say. And uh, yes, I, I have also struggled with that one boy and I've managed here and there to have some content, but I can relate totally to being blank and having content lined up a week ahead of time truly does help. Good job, congratulations for being able to get your way around this challenge. I, your inputs are quite useful to all of us. I believe we've had discussions with uh, Tracy on the side about having a content calendar and I hope she'll share with us how that is going. But thank you, Wamboy. Somebody also said I opening. I opening, please unmute and share more about how I opening this month, this past week and month has been. That, that was my response. Uh, for me, the past month has been quite interesting. Um, it goes to show that sometimes life can be so hectic and you're moving, and you're not really reflecting and you just need to wake up, go to work, uh, go do whatever you need to do in the evening. It's like you're running and um, sometimes it's good to just breathe in, breathe out and look around you. So I was in a moment where I was just struck. I was just sitting and looking around in my environment and I just realized how how things are just going in life and uh, to, uh, to appreciate the small things and the blessings that we get. So it was quite interesting to just stop, breathe in, breathe out, reflect at the good, at the small things. It doesn't matter how small. The things are going okay, no matter how hectic life is. Yeah. Wow. You're almost describing how I felt, Angeline. Can relate to going through the moments because everything is happening so fast. And... Uh, I usually call it wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> it feels like you're just going through the motions, but yeah, it's very quite important to stop and smell the proverbial roses and just be present in each moment. So I'm glad that you've been able to do that despite all the demands in our lives and that you've been able to suffer the little things, the little joys and have eye opening experiences. Thank you for that. I think I will just now hand over to Madam District PR Manager, Mary, to take us through highlights of uh, Toastmasters District 114, the news uh, of everything that is happening and what we've been up to in the month of September going into October. I think uh, Angeline has wrapped up for us how our experiences for the past week or month has been. So I'll go back to sharing the screen, even as I hand over to Madam Mary Mutano. Mary Mutano, over to you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is the wrong background. Just give me a second. Let me oh, sorry. Background. Um, can I share my screen, please? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let me just share my screen so that I don't have to tell you to, you know. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, how is everybody? I hope everyone is uh, doing well. I'm glad I've been able to transition. Um, have I been a co-host? You can make me yeah, yeah co-host now. So this is what has been happening in the district. I hope that you've all seen what's going on. There is quite a bit going on, but uh, in summary, in summary, this is what is happening. Uh, renewals. Today is the deadline for renewals. As you know, our district is... Uh, um, in need of members who have renewed. And this is because um, a lot of members fell off last year and the year before. And so we currently are at 87 clubs. However, the less people renew, a club is only a club if it has 20 members and above. So with members, with clubs that have fewer members, you find 
um, they really struggle. And I know some of the VPPRs here, our task is to ensure that we are creating exciting content and attracting new members. So I'm always here and available to help so that to brainstorm on ways that we can have more guests. So ideally, we should be working with VPMs to make sure that we have at least maybe 10, 15 guests who come so that five can convert or three can convert. So it's quite a task, but we, we can brainstorm to make sure that we're doing the most. And that's why I was recommending that we start using other WhatsApp platforms over and above our own WhatsApp platforms, because if you share like your poster five times in our WhatsApp platforms, we are all Toastmasters. We're looking for guests. So we should be looking at using other platforms that will attract other people. So putting it on our status, putting it on um, LinkedIn, on our socials, all that is really what is going to help us to attract guests to the clubs and get them to convert into members. So I had shared the template for all of us to be able to use this. If you have not yet um, used this template, feel free to use it, I don't know, for the next renewals or also for another you know, communication. As you've seen here, my dear Vivian has used the template to do something else. So you can always repurpose, just copy and create a new uh, you know, link. So our second big thing that happened was the District 114 Leadership Week. I don't know if you all saw this uh, communications that went out. I had shared it in the VPPR group and asked that we create a lot of hype. Again, this is an outreach initiative to help people understand why Toastmasters is important. I still have like the five um, posts that I had created to help people uh, just share on their status reasons why you should join Toastmasters. I'm happy to share that. Again, the purpose of this forum is to share as many resources as possible so that you don't have to recreate. In fact, if somebody has already created something that you feel is important, like the content calendar, amen, Vivian and Tracy and Wamboi, <laughs> please put it on the chat so that we don't have to think about it because there is so much we're doing. Um, and so this was an all-in initiative to help us to get as many members as possible. And I'll show you some of the things we did. We I created a media kit that helps people to understand how to communicate about Toastmasters. And then we used this to send out a team of what we're calling our media champions to go and explain um in different media houses. So we went to the Daily Nation, went to KBC, we went to, in Uganda, there was so many initiatives that happened. And um, we also managed to host numerous activities. So there was the media outreach. Um, there's also some interviews happening this week on Capital FM. So listen out and you know make sure that you're also amplifying it because the more people get to hear about it, the more excitement we create about Toastmasters, the better it is for us. Other activities that happen on a corporate level was uh, Division B held several activities. Uh, for example, there was the Blue Eagles and Himea um, TMC Toastmasters clubs joint meetings. Uh, that's Stanbic Bank HQ. Westlands, it's a corporate initiative to get Stanbic Bank to open more corporate clubs. There was the same thing that happened in KCB. They're opening, ready to pay for their members and start four new clubs. And then there's this activity that's happening on Saturday uh, for all of us and anyone who has ever asked you, why should I be a Toastmaster? Um, Uganda, so all this 
this will continue to build or at all of your clubs is able to come in and create a page for yourselves. As you can see, this is Division D. If you have websites for yourself, you can create pages on the District 114 uh, website. So I thought this was a big announcement because we had this discussion with Tracy and she was so stressed because she had, she was like, I've been asked to create a website and I'm like, page that links, you know, you can use to link to your content. Um, so people might still want a website, but I'd recommend that you still have a page on the District 114 uh, website so that it gives you a lot of legitimacy and uh, that's a credibility is the word I'm looking for. So please reach out to me directly uh, if you'd like to your web page on our website. And lastly, we are having 100 years of Toastmasters being celebrated on the 22nd of October. This is the actual date when Toastmasters was started 100 years ago. So this is like a huge, huge thing. And this is when we will do the All In Quarterly Awards We'll have the district director address and we will have um, a lot of fun to kind of just share with everyone why Toastmasters is important. So please mark your calendars. I had shared this on the group, but I'll ask you guys to just make sure that you announce it. You know, when you're asked, is there any announcement that we as the VPPR have? Please, this is the one thing I want you to make an announcement for in every club meeting. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat uh, because we'd like to get on to our next session that is being facilitated by our dearest Angelina Gunje. She's a design expert with an amazing background as I'd shared in design, having her run her own company. She's now coming to help us from the goodness of her heart and because I begged her and we drank coffee together. <laughs> <laughs> so she has been, uh, what I really love about Angelina is that she actually came up with so many templates so that VPPRs would never have to worry. A lot of the templates that we're using now are some of the ones that she created. So she comes from such a place of um, creativity and a lot of hard work and she's really the epitome of making things work uh, simply. So because I'd introduced her before, I'd like her to now come and uh, take over from me so that you guys can get your money's worth. <laughs> That's how I would like to describe it. Uh, because she was our carrot that we were dangling for you guys to come today. So over to you, Angelina. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can take over. Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much. And I'm also very, I was very flattered and honored that she would um, reach out and invite me to come today. I remember that we used to work together during my time as PRM and we had our challenges. We had our wonderful moments. It, there was no boring moment, I can definitely assure you. And so I'm really happy to be here, humbled as, as well. And um, looking forward to, to, to this session, I can see that there's a pop-up asking me to share my video. What I'll do, I'll do so shortly. For some reason, I've been struggling today with my network. Um, I think Safaricom, the wind, you know, it's the Wi-Fi. So when the wind changes, the Wi-Fi, you just lose the connection. So this is me, Angelina Ngunje. Uh, I was a VPPR when I started. I was a Toastmaster and then I was a VPPR for about one year. Then I graduated to become officer for membership. And after that, I, I supported the then PRM, uh, Grace, Grace Mora. And then later, I finally also graduated further to become the PRM myself and work with amazing people, amazing with peers, amazing uh, division peers as well. 
And yes, so today we are going to look at two main areas. I'm not certain who is sharing the screen, but um, if it's possible to share what the content that I had shared, but if, if that's not possible, I can also try and share it. Um, yes, I can see it. Right. So when we were having a chat with Mary, Mary really explained to me that there, we are all different in our different capacities, lawyers, um, accountants, um, tax experts. So we work with different parts of our brains. We have the left brain, the right brain. And so you find that even in design, we have something called the formula for design. How do you follow predictable steps in order to create a design? And um, the simplest approach is to have two steps, just two very simple steps. And this, this is something that we need to do regularly in order for it to be uh, quite effective. The first one is, always check with a brand guide. I know that it's a big document. The first time that I saw it, I was very overwhelmed. You know, if it's more than five pages, I start zoning on, oh, this is too much. Um, in, in, in college, I, I used to do statistics and I did it twice in two separate uh, institutions. And I really felt statistics was like my soulmate. I could feel it in me. I, could, I had it, I understood it. And then I failed twice at two different institutions. So it, it, everybody has a different way of understanding things. And sometimes you can feel like it's in you, but then it's it's difficult to bring it out. Um, so when it comes to the brand guide, it's, it's really straightforward. It's a big document, but with time in the next three months or so, if you do it regularly, it's like riding a bike. It gets easier. But then you need to be consistent. You need to trust that the brand guide has the answers you have. There are so many different kinds of logos that Toastmasters has, uh, different applications. There are colors for Toastmasters. Uh, there's a font. I'm sure that uh, when we type and we choose Arial or Types New Roman uh, for our professional lives, that is usually totally the, the fit. But then for Toastmasters, it uses a different kind of of font and so we need to be quite familiar with this and all of these answers all of the questions that you have about the designs they're all in this one document the brand guide so for vbprs prms prs this is the one document that will guide you through it's like if you're a lawyer and you, you you're specific about an area of law you have a guided document that guides you and if it's accounting or if you're working with Excel, there's a document that guides you on these different formulas. So for the purpose of VPPR, the brand guide is the one document that you definitely need to keep close to your heart. It has a lot of answers to many of the questions that you would have. Um, then the second step is the Canva tool. I've had and I'm really happy to hear that some of you are also designers and that you really find it very flexible to work with Illustrator and Photoshop. And those are really nice tools to work with. They're very flexible. And during my time as a designer, I do like working with Illustrator and Photoshop as well. But then I learned the chair work, the Canva. All you have to do is drop things in it and then it just magically makes things happen. So that is where I started now putting all of these design tools to the side. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 Canva is, is the one, you know. This is the holy grail to be a VPPR. You can't do without Canva. And there are also PowerPoint templates that I've seen that are really incredible. So the good thing with Canva is that it works with templates very easily and you can apply the brand colors easily as well. Uh, we can move to the next slide. So now, yeah, so this goes to the first to the first point, the brand guide. When you open it, the second page literally shows you all of the topics that you can go through, all of the questions that you might have. So I always find that it's really good to go through it. I know 37 pages is not really ideal. <laughs> Five pages would have been perfect. 
but it's it's really short and and the language that has been used is rather straightforward and uh, one of the uh, good areas is how it lays it out in in clarity all you need all of the information in precise um, fashion uh, we can move to the next slide and if I am getting close to the time, please let me know. Sometimes I can get very excited with uh, sharing the presentation. I forget the time. So for the Canva tool, there are the templates. And um, where possible, I'm not sure whether these have already been shared, but I encourage you to work with the templates. One thing that I had early in this meeting is that sometimes you're trying to visualize the theme of the meeting. Um, however, don't focus so much on the theme because the theme is there for purpose of communication. It's there to trigger your creativity, your thoughts about what you will say, how you will say it. So the focus is more on presentation, communication, rather than the visual aspect of it. Uh, at Toastmasters, it's all about leadership and communication skills, public speaking. So the theme is mostly geared towards creativity in that area. The first time when I was VPPR and I looked at the themes, I was like, wow, where do I start? So within the first three months, I started getting really burnt out because there are so many themes. Every meeting has a different theme. And if you overthink it, the, the, you will start veering far away from the main visual communication that uh, us as, oh, okay, you now as VPPRs need to communicate, which is public speaking, leadership. It's restricted to that, but that's the main purpose of Toastmasters. So in terms of visual communication, keep it simple. Don't stress yourself. Um, but then when it comes to uh, the conversations, the what what the speakers will talk about, how creative they can go with their, you know, the gestures, the tone, the variety. That is where the team really is best applied at. Then the second most important is the brand color. So I know a lot of us are familiar with Safaricom, BMW, Blue Band. When you think about these brands, what is the color that you see? So maybe you can share in the chat. What color do you see with Safaricom? And if you think about it, what color comes to your mind about Blue Band? And I know the trick with Blue Band is that it has one name in its in its um, brand name that is contrary to the color that we would actually see. Thank you, Vivian. Safaricom is green, yes. And Telcom, obviously, it will be another color. And these are, and then we have <laughs> exactly blue band is yellow, but then it says blue. But you don't see blue, you see yellow because that's what you have seen all the time. When you go shopping and you need blue band, not all these other things, you just go for that yellow stack of items over there in the margarine section. And so this is something that is ingrained in us because it has been marketed, communicated over and over and over. That is the thing that we have been shown. And so let me ask you, when you think of Toastmasters, what's the color that you see? And that is the question you need to ask also for fellow Toastmasters and potential new Toastmasters, so the general public. What would they see or perceive if you say the word Toastmasters, Toastmasters International, what do they see in their head? And that is where we are at, at, at a good position to communicate uh, in PR. We want to show them a particular color, a particular idea, like Toastmasters, public speaking, leadership, Toastmasters, blue or maroon, it, it's the first thing that will come to their mind. It's the identity. This is what we call the brand identity. It has to be really something that you you you, you see very chap chap in your head. And so with, with this Canva tool, it's really good. That's how you can work with it efficiently. It's a good formula. Just keep it simple. Two things. The first one, work with the brand guide. The brand guide is your 
your your your guide. It, it should be close to you, close to your heart. Every time when you wake up, the first thing that is there, other than your normal life, obviously, when you think about Toastmasters, it's the plant guide. At least for now, as as a VPPR. And the second part is Canva. Canva is very very powerful. It's simple. It's straightforward. It's very fast, and it will really make your life much easier. And I think that's it. We're at the end, unless I'm skipping something. Was there something else after this slide? Yeah, the plant color. What's the color that comes to your mind? And so that's it. Very simple. Brand guide and the Canva tool. These are the two that if you keep doing it over and over and over, it will make life easier. So I'm done with this. Maybe I can hear if you have any questions, if there are any main challenges that you've had with either the brand guide itself or the Canva tool. Any challenges or even amazing moments where you are like, yes, this is working for you. Uh, feel free, unmute and share your story. Well, I can start. I hope I'm audible. Yeah. Thank you, first of all, for those insights. I just had you start off by saying how we are very many different professionals here. And when you mentioned law and statistics, I was like, I can relate to that. I'm not one of those people who had any background at all in PR. But I do agree Canva is a, a quite a good start. I've never, I've not quite gotten into working with the Adobe, but it's very encouraging to hear the insights that you've shared from Canva. And I think what I loved, what I love about Toastmasters International is the fact that we have the brand guide because at least that made it easier to know which colors should work you know, as opposed to putting my favorite color, which happens to be red and not the red for TMI, but I've learned to accept these different colors and always check that they they are in line. Any post I make that is using the, the brand guide. My question would be, and this is really mainly on the theme, and you said something very useful that I've also come to experience as a challenge is every meeting has a different theme. And some of the themes are as random from, it's not usually specifically about public speaking or leadership. And uh, sometimes you get caught up, when you say you get caught up with the, the theme and wanting to you know, align the theme to your flyer and then you get you forget that Toastmasters is really about two specific um, items that is public speaking and and uh, leadership and communication. So, is it just advisable to just perhaps not even have the background? You know, like I can see in most of our flyers, sometimes we have uh, a lady on a speaking with a microphone others you have someone on a laptop but for example what if it's talking about money is it okay to like put a, 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 a template with the money or coins in the background or those are not deal breakers or th that will take away from the main you know uh, mission and objective of Toastmasters International mm. I know I know there is a temptation to work with that. Um, first and foremost, you need to bring out the identity of Toastmasters. So when it comes to the dominant message, so the aspect that is really big enough for people to notice that first, so in this case, it would be the text and it would be the picture and then the background. Uh, those ones, it would be good to align them to the Toastmasters brand identity then there is 
other ways where you can bring in the themes, for example, icons. So where you have the, the text of the theme saying, uh, uh, present your money's worth or communicate your money's worth, you could add icons. For example, the icon that shows money. Um, if you're talking about negotiation, you could have icons of people uh, shaking hands. So it doesn't take away from the main message, which is Toastmasters, the place for communication, the place for public speaking, the place for learning leadership, because that's what you're selling. That's the message that you want to tell people. You want to tell them, come to Toastmasters. Here you become a good leader. The reasons why we are all here, or you guys are there, you know, I'm no longer a Toastmaster. <laughs> so I can't say we. So you, you want to educate the public about what Toastmasters is about. So the first and foremost, the first message, tell them what it is about. It's about public speaking. It's about um, communication. It's about leadership. So if you start showing images of money, images of um, other topics that are far away from communication, public speaking, and leadership, it will confuse people. But then you can always bring these elements in, in a small way that doesn't take away from the main message. So you can always have an icon that exemplifies what you need to, to say about the theme. It's like having a billboard message and then having a small message over there saying, okay, leadership, talk about money in this meeting. You, you need to know the priorities and show them visually as well. I hope that helped. <laughs> yes, yes, it did. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there well, any other? Shy. Yeah, I don't want to mm -hmm. hog the space. So, BPPRs, are there any questions you have, particularly on using Canva, and particularly on the Toastmasters International Brand Guide, which she says should be our Bible? Please raise your hand or feel free to unmute and ask your question. I like this. People are very confident. <laughs> no problems. I have a question though. Uh -huh. yes. And it's about the fonts. So I was going through the brand kit, the brand guide, and uh, the different fonts but sometimes I struggle knowing when to use what, where. And most mm -hmm. of the time, just to be safe, I always use Montserrat. I, I use it in bold or just normal if it's a subtopic. And I saw this, another one that's a bit of calligraphy, I can't remember the name. But how do you use, there are about three, four fonts given to us by Toastmasters International. What is your rule of thumb in applying each one of them to make visually, uh, you know, visually attractive flyers? There is the first and most dominant font is one that you need to purchase. And because of that challenge that not everybody is going to commit to purchase a font, uh, they provide that secondary option, which is a free font. And um, so you can always use them. If you have Gotham, I believe Gotham is the primary font. You can use it for the main heading. You can decide how to use it. Um, there's no particular hierarchy or guidance provided for that. So you're rather free. The rule of thumb is always less is better. So when you're designing something and you want to introduce fonts, keep it at two, two different fonts at the same time. Um, so you can always decide which two you want to use and how you're going to use them. So you can use, for instance, Montserrat as the main title. And then the, I'm not sure whether there is a calligraphy one, but if there is, you can always use it as a secondary. Um, and just make sure that it's legible. The trick with uh, 
calligraphy font is that sometimes when it's a small or when it's a long word, it becomes difficult to read. So you want to make sure that double test, put that uh, poster over there, just squint your eyes and just read. Because even myself with my glasses, sometimes I'm tempted not to wear these glasses because maybe I'm just, it makes me look dorky in a situation where I don't want to look dorky, you know. I want to look good. So I'm just like, oh, no, 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 not today. And um, if I see a poster with calligraphy text, I'm going to be like, I'm going to pretend I can read it, but then I'm struggling and I might miss out on information. Uh, so it's really quite free. The reason why there is Gotham, uh, Montserrat, is because Gotham, you have to pay for it. And the calligraphy, I suppose it's for diversity and also fancy moments. You want to just have that poster that looks really nice. Uh, so it's up to you, up to your discretion on how to use it, how to apply them. But just be aware that different fonts are perceived differently or can be read differently. So you want to make sure the difficult fonts are very big so that they're very fast to read. And then the the, the, the small text, you can always have it with, with uh, Montserrat or Gotham because they're very fast to make out. They're not complicated. You don't have to think like, okay, so what is, what is this? What does it mean? What is this scribbling? Trying to decipher. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Keeping it simple, keeping it simple. It's something that I've had to learn as well because my first flyer had too much information. <laughs> I was told um, some of it is repetitive and I had to make my flyer not look so busy, which also makes me wonder, can, can one overuse icons? You know, other than the icon for the calendar, the location, the Zoom link, if you're adding any other icons, is one or two, or how many number? Like you said, for fonts, we try to minimize them to two different fonts at the same time. So for icons, should it also be at least one big icon and then the rest are tinier or how do we how does one go about that that's just, it depends with the importance of the icon um it's like when you're creating a speech you want the most important theme or topic to be the first one and to be the one that you're going to really you know dedicate a lot of effort on it's the same with visual language uh in a speech, you're encouraged to keep to three points. You don't want to overburden the, the audience with too much information. They're going to start forgetting things. Uh, the way that you start remembering things will be different. You want to do the same with the posters as well. You want to keep the communication, the visual communication as clear as possible. So in this instance also, the less, the better. Keep it simple. I would encourage two, maximum three different icons. Again, it depends with the importance which icon you're going to emphasize on. Um, if there's an icon that really needs to catch attention more than the others, by all means make it bigger, but not bigger than the image that you're trying to communicate about Toastmasters, because that one always is number one. Toastmasters, what is it about? Leadership. When you hear Toastmasters, you know, that's where I learn communication or public speaking. And then the rest is, is up to you what comes after that. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like we're speaking to ourselves. I don't know. <laughs> Am I the only one who has so many questions? <laughs> it's like going... being in the desert and hearing it. <laughs> I will ask perhaps Caroline Kahoreria. We haven't quite heard from you today. Do you have any comments, any questions, any challenges you've experienced or anything you need clarification with? Uh, something about uh, designing your posters that you've experienced these past few weeks or months. Caroline, please unmute. Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening. 
Thank you so much for this opportunity. Okay, this week I've had a challenge uh, with coming up with a poster for a charter party. We will be having a charter party. Sorry, I forgot to mention I'm from Juja Toastmasters. And we'll be having a charter party this month. So it's been a challenge coming up with a poster for a charter party. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Caroline. I would like to know more about the challenge exactly that you've had. Um, I know that a charter party is something very unique and uh, it happens only once. Where where exactly are you having that big challenge? Oh, the challenge where I'm having is uh, maybe including the photos. I don't know whether I'm supposed to include the photos or maybe do just a poster without uh, any photos. Because I was trying to go online to check on the charter posters, but I, but I haven't come across many templates. Sorry. Yeah, templates. Um, that's a good. That's a good um dilemma. <laughs> it's a good situation. What would happen is that the Toastmasters International website has already quite a lot of photographs, and if you think about what does chattering mean? Chattering means you've come together as a club, you've decided these are the members, and now you're going to open that club, right? Uh, so it, it is a congregation of people. So people are coming together. So an image with people communicating, you see opportunities to do that, to say what is Toastmasters about, where people are congregated together, yeah, that's that's a possibility. And a lot of these images are on Toastmasters International. And um, I like the question that you've asked, do I really need to use images? And the answer is no, you don't really have to. But keep it in a sort of balance so that not all of the posters every week don't have images, but rather maybe once a month, you have a poster that doesn't have images, maybe that's the biggest challenge where you are like, ah, what image, what image do I use? You know, you're, you're like, you have so many things you need to do in life. You know, you have this poster and you don't know what to, what image to use. Just go without, you don't have to have the image, um, but you definitely need the Toastmasters colors. Uh, we want to see Safaricom as green when you see red. You know, that is not Safaricom. And you see blue, you know, that one is not Safaricom. Um, so you want the audience to definitely know Toastmasters. So when they see the colors of Toastmasters, you know, yes, that's where I need to go. If I want to be a leader or be good in public speaking. Um, I hope that has answered your question, Caroline. Yeah, it has. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you, Caroline, and thank you, Angeline. You've just popped a question. A question has come into my mind while you're explaining about the images. And I've gone through some of the images available on the Toastmasters International VPPR toolkit. And I noticed most of them are white people. And I felt like they don't resonate with us because a majority of us like in our meetings I've only ever seen two white people since I joined over a year ago so I usually feel very uncomfortable putting using those images of white <laughs> of white people like something more familiar would be black some black guy and on canvas sometimes when you look for photos if you're not paid up they don't give you some so much to work with but at least you've explained that the most important thing is not the images but keeping the colors but where would one where do you draw the line between overly white and nothing against i'm not being racist i hope i don't sound it's your racist. audience your audience you have to speak to them they have to be able to identify <laughs> yeah you know we had that challenge as well um during my time supporting Grace and myself as a PRM, 
for the district. And what we did, we actually worked together with quite a lot of Toastmasters to get photographs. So we would photograph them in different situations where they are sitting on the table, having a, uh, on the pod desk, doing a speech and so forth. And we, the most important when you take pictures of people, remember the consent form. And we had those consent forms, we have everything. Um, these images should actually be available. They should be available to the VPPRs so that at least you're communicating to the audience. So if you're communicating to Kenyans, you want to have Kenyans on the picture, if you're communicating to in, uh, individuals in India, you want to make sure that you are talking their language. You're talking to, to their identity. And, and that's a really good point you've raised. A lot of the images on Toastmasters International are very focused on the American audience, which is not particularly the most diverse in terms of, you know, it's not Kenya. In Kenya, maybe you see that one or two or three individual that um, is Caucasian. And so you want to to, to see. I'm not, I'm not sure if Mary would be able to speak to that, but there should be access to these images um, they were provided. And I can see that Ruth, you have your hand up. Maybe before I hand back over to Vivian, you'd like to share something? Yes, I would. Thank you very much, Angelina. My question is on the shapes that we put on the posters, which from your experience, which shapes are comfortable to the eye and are eye catching? Case in point, the poster that's in front of us, you have a circle for the Q&A, and then there's that cylindrical shape down at the bottom for the yellow, and uh, some sort of rectangle or trapezium in the maroon. How mm -hmm. many shapes are comfortable to the eye, and do we need to have the shapes in there? I have a challenge when I am put, making putting up the faces, let's say for the TMOD and the guest speaker, whose face goes in the circle, what does it communicate, whose goes in the rectangle. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. I like your image. Um, the, I like the, is that a PlayStation? <laughs> and, uh, I'm like, I'm drawn to it. It's like, oh, nice. And now I'm curious. Uh, how you, you, you spend time with entertainment. But the question that you've asked is super good because it, it even touches on psychology. There is proof that different shapes elicit different emotions. Um, here, for example, you can see the circle. The circle is the most comfortable of all the shapes. And the least comfortable, maybe you can guess. Um, who can guess? Maybe write real quick in the chat. What what do you think is the least comfortable of all the shapes? The shape when you see, you feel like, hey. uh -uh. maybe not. All right. So the least comfortable shape is a triangle. The thing here is um, the edges. The edges are seen as aggressive, as areas where you could get hurt. And the mind is very interesting how it automatically perceives these things. Um, so when you're creating the posters, again, simplicity, just as with the font, keep it to two minimum with the, with the icons where you can use less, the better. So with the shapes as well, use fewer. You want to create, it depends also with your message, but let's keep it simple. The fewer diversity in terms of shapes, the better. And the most comfortable shape to put the mind at ease is the circle. Or if you have a rectangle, make sure the corners are sort of edged. If you have a, um, even, even interestingly enough, a triangle, if you have the corners uh, sort of edged, it seems more cuddly, more comfortable, more like if you touch it, you would prick yourself and start, oh, oh, maybe I should faint because this is a drop of blood here. <laughs> no, I can't deal with this. So there is 
that idea of danger when you have sharp things, when you perceive sharp things. And so always with uh, posters, you want, it depends with what you want the audience to feel. So if you want them to feel comfortable and invited, uh, always veer towards the circle, the, the comfortable things that you, you, you can provide. Uh, let me know if that was helpful, Ruth, or if you have even a second question after that, or what your favorite shape is. Thank you, right, Angeline. So that's, that's okay. I, yeah. I in my mind, in my mind, I think the scary shape is a rectangle because it comes off as a coffin. <laughs> But now that you added triangle, oh yeah, it's it's really edgy. But thank you, it's clear now. Mm. Mm. I like that. I like the interpretation of the of the rectangle. Oh, that kind of trapezium uh, bent mm, yeah. rectangle. Some thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ruth, as well. All right, so I think we can hand it back over to Vivian and Mary. Yes, yes, we can. I just, uh, it was very interesting to hear your conversations with Ruth about the shapes. I'm not quite a big user of shapes, but when I do, I love circles or ovals. Now that I have, uh, I didn't know my mind was working <laughs> in terms of sharp edges. I, I didn't think anything about it, but it's good to realize that you know, a triangle with the sharp edges uh, kind of creates danger. But I was wondering, what about a star? Is mm -hmm. Does it give the same mood as a triangle? And the, the interesting it, is yeah. the symbolism. Sorry. Not only the symbolism. The, the, the interesting thing with the star is that there's a symbolism. There is yes. a meaning that we associate with it. Your brain will still see it as be careful how you handle it. You could get hurt. But then culturally and in our society, we always see the star with something nice, like the North Star, um, something for direction or, uh, you know, when you see glittering stars, you're like, oh, this is nice. Maybe this is um, uh, some something important because we always associate it with uh, good things. But then your brain at the, at the back of it, you, you want to be careful how you touch it, how you hold it. You don't want to get hurt. Quite interesting. Thank you very much, Angeline. I think she deserves a round of applause. And if you can, please react. Thank you so much for these insights. I believe each one of us has learned something today that they will take with them. And I think she's still here so in case some question pops in, even as we continue to our next session, that you can just drop it in the chat. We sincerely want to appreciate you very much. Angeline, thank you, thank you, thank you for your time and everything you have taught us about uh, getting and maneuvering our way around Canva. I think the rule of thumb for me today has been to keep it simple, and I will carry this along with me. I just want to hand over to Mary to take us through our next session. And drum rolls, please, because it's one of the most interesting parts other than the learning. It is the poster of the month. We are going to just have them announced, uh, the winning posters for the month of September. And I'm so excited to see and, and celebrate all, all the posters that will make it to the podium. So I'll hand over to you, Mary so that you can introduce Mr. Baron Ochola, who will take us through the poster of the month. Thank you very much, Vivian, and thank you, Angelina. I really want to say another round of applause. I feel like I didn't hear people applauding. I, I'm catching feelings. <laughs> um, <Ooh -hoo. laughs> yes, yes, that's the reactions we want. And um, <clears throat> I now have the pleasure of Vivian, let me share my screen uh, as I introduce Barrow. Sure. 
I now have the pleasure of introducing to it. I have to hide things here first. Don't want people to see who the poster of the month winner is. Um, one second. Okay. Now I can share my screen. Yeah. Everybody close your eyes. <laughs> I don't know why it's refusing. Oh. Trans to keep us anticipating. <laughs> can you see it? Yes. Yes, we can. I put, I put slideshow first. Okay, fine. Now I'm sure nobody has seen the winner. So, ladies and gentlemen, we received 15 submissions for this month's Poster of the Month Award. And I have to tell you guys, we were so impressed with the quality of work that's coming through. And I know the judges had a very difficult time choosing because I was watching them, looking at every poster. And I know that if I was the one presenting this, you would not have believed me. So I'd like to introduce Baron Ochola, who is the chief judge of the Post of the Month Initiative. He'll come in and just give us his understanding of what this whole initiative is about and um, encourage all of us. Are there people I should have put my, I need to see, maybe Tracy, help me to just, and uh, Vivian, please can I see uh, by a show of hands, how many people are in this meeting that submitted their posters this month, in the month of September? Could I see by a show of hands, please? Uh -huh. I can see Vivian. Who else? What two? Two people only. Uh am I missing the numbers? Is it only two people? Yeah, on the chat box, uh there are just three hands raised. Three hands raised. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Massey. Hege Wamboi Karebe, yes. Caroline Kahoriria, and myself. I Caroline. don't know if there are others, yeah. Yes, we saw the poster from Juja, we saw from Karen, we saw from Kwanzaa. Is there anybody else? Heno Henok uh, from Addis? Is that you or who is it who submitted from uh, Addis? Okay. Okay. Anyway. We are so, so, so proud of everybody who submitted. If you know you haven't submitted your posters, please share, especially the people from Rwanda. I've heard you say you do your posters in advance. Please share. Okay, without much further ado, ladies and gentlemen, drum rolls, introducing our own chief judge. Please unmute and welcome Baron Ochola to the virtual screen. I'm honestly not sure you can hear me. I am worried about that. Can you hear me clearly? You don't go to? <laughs> Apologize. I do not know how my camera might have turned there. I say. I apologize, I don't know, because uh, the government should have lasted too long. So should I still share, or should I give Mary to share my thoughts, because we shared in depth. Chief Judge, Chief Judge, please share. You can, uh, we can allow you to have your video off if that's uh, going to be a challenge. Okay. As he's trying to get his voice back, his audio, um, I can just give you what the winners get. So the first month was a bit bumpy for us, obviously being an, a new initiative. We noticed that um, 
No worries. We noticed that our award for the top winner was 10, a gift card worth $10 from the gift store. And the uh, shipping fee was $15. <laughs> so we had to ask our DD to waive that so that we can actually enjoy this without having any shipping fees. So we are starting a new district store so that the things are already ordered from the US and are available locally. And um, so that has been a little bumpy, but definitely everybody is going to get their winning, winning um, vouchers yes so they are gift vouchers over and above that the posters are publicized on the district social media pages and uh, vppr is awarded success stories obviously shared out during the vppr hangout which is this and the ten dollar gift card the other thing that we thought was very useful in this season is the this a uh, business size card for the winning club so the reason for this is because we are doing this to make your work simpler. So if you have an amazing poster and 20 people come, you want to be able to give them something that says, welcome back to our club. So this is a share, uh, a Canva version of this where then you are able to uh, put this QR code to your club it could be whatever uh, the VPM decides. It could be the VPM's number, so call me, or this is customizable basically to help you to have a tool to attract members to your club or to keep the members who come to your club to come another day. Remember, people don't make uh, choices, decisions the first day. They usually come over and over again. So if you give them something that they can remember, uh, they are able to... Um, keep it and it will give them that connection with your club so this is what uh, second prize that goes to the winning club now baron are you ready oops yes i am just as just to confirm you can hear me clearly oh no this is so bad how did i do this <laughs> okay um Please, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Right. And... All right. Sorry about that. And I will make a less than 10 seconds explanation. I was a chief judge, as has become a behavior of mine now. And then the Gavellias took the meeting about 40 minutes overboard. And as chief judge, you can't, you can't jump out at that point. But I am delighted to be here and I am very ready and uh, ready to share. So the criteria that we looked at uh, uh, for... First off, before I share criteria, the initiative is such that we are branding at a high level. One of the things that these days is said is if you're not documenting, then it did not happen, right? So it's the same with Toastmasters. If we go and host meetings in our backyards, which is allowed, but then we do not publicize that there is a meeting, then the neighbor is going to think you are just having family time. And this is why it's important for us as Toastmasters to publicize. It's open to the public. Everybody, please come in. And while we are doing that, what tone are we publicizing with? What energy, what vibe, our brand? And this is where the initiative comes in. The initiative is to incentivize, to boost for the VPPRs, the VPPRs committees to deliver the best of what they can as far as branding. So as Toastmaster Mary has uh, shared, there is an incentive, which is uh, relieving items from the gift shop, that is. But then more than that, it is very important that we have members participate because first off, a lot of the members on the public relations team are very good at graphics. So we might as well make graphics and nominate ourselves or we choose graphics, but that's not the point. The point is, how can clubs take this initiative? Let them make the graphics and then let them share in. The point I'm making here is we do not pick graphics online and then we choose our favorite. No, 
The clubs nominate their favorite. You as a club leader, as a VPPR, you create your poster, you think it's amazing, you share it. We, we shall also give feedback, right? We shall also give feedback on what you did well and what could improve. And maybe if I'm to share now to that about the winning poster, you will find that we had about three posters that we ended up having more contestation about. I believe that's a real word. It was a contesting argument. And it came down to, is it brand compliant? Okay, it is. Does it follow the elements of, of design? We have things like hierarchy, are things arranged? Is the information that is supposed to be a most clear, clear? Uh, then there's the principles of design. And then we also talk about the energy. Is the poster exciting or is it boring? Does it capture the information? And all these criteria goes into play. We have we have tools, we have a tool that we use to, to look at this, look at all these criteria. So it is a big urge to all the VPPRs and anybody, you might not be a VPPR, you might be another committee member, it is still valid working on this, that every month as you make posters, don't wait for the end of the month because we'll skip your mind, but as you make posters, please share them with the PR committee, and then we can be able to acknowledge and recognize the work that you are doing because you are doing a tremendous job. It is our job to make sure that as public relations is defined, to bring in good publicity, to make sure that we're in the good eye, and that is what we end up doing. Thank you so much. Back to you, Mary. Yeah, and Our chief judge has spoken, so our drum rolls, poster number three is, as you've seen, Kwanzaa Toastmasters Club, Kenya Kwanzaa Toast Kwanzaa Kenya. It's not Kenya Kwanzaa. <laughs> That's Kwanza. a political party in Kenya. <laughs> okay, okay, I've seen. So poster in position number three, again, these were... Yeah, there were 15 posters submitted, so it was not easy to get to this decision, but we're grateful. Poster runners-up poster was Rongai Postmasters Club. Rongai has been doing such a good job, guys. You need to, same as Kwanzaa, you need to go and follow everybody, all the Toastmasters clubs in Nairobi on Instagram, and you will be shocked. I'm usually there stealing uh, copy and steal everything <laughs> case so uh, this is what i've been doing i uh, the wrong guy has been doing very well and then the winner of the september challenge is tika toastmasters club this was a very exciting poster as you can see the energy is there the lunch network and play is all there and we felt that um, it was very clear the message that they were passing it is a social poster however it is for the club and uh, they after a lot of conversation with the judges they decided that this was going to be the winning poster so I have the honor of requesting the winners to contact District 114. It's called D, what is it? D114 to spaces at gmail.com uh, to claim your prizes. As I said, um, the winner does get the box of business cards, 50 of them, and uh, they get that printed. They get a chance to customize it. And then they also get the $10 gift card. So, again, yes, uh, this is just to encourage you to keep up the good work. And we're really, really proud of you. So I'd like to request that we please tell us what we're, what is working, what's not working, and how we can improve. Um, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that is the end of our session. I'd like to bring Vivian back. I think she has some wise words of wisdom to help us end the night.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you, Baron, for managing to carry out two tasks at the same time in the backdrop of your judging at the Gavel Club. Wow. I don't know if I would have been able to be in two meetings at the same time. We sincerely appreciate your inputs. And from the rest of the judges, perhaps if they're not here, you can just extend that gratitude. And uh, congratulations to all the winners. Those are beautiful posters, particularly from Rongai Antika Toastmasters. A big congratulations. Also to Kwanza, though I feel like I'm <laughs> clapping for myself and I'm very humble. I don't like to do that. But thank you. Thank you to everyone who has attended our meeting. I've shared the link for the feedback. I know there are people who get bored with that uh, Toastmasters line of feedback is a breakfast of champions. My president doesn't like it. She says we should find another tagline, but we do need feedback. We do uh, only grow when we have feedback, particularly positive or constructive feedback. So we would like to request that before you leave, you just copy that link take a minute or two, it doesn't take more than three minutes and give us your feedback as to how you'd want us to run our future engagements. Again, we meet every last Monday of the month, right, Mary? And we're looking forward to our next Hangout. It will be on the last Monday of October, which happens to fall on the 28th of October. So please save the date and carry a fellow VPPR that you know about who has never attended this meeting. The more we learn the Miria and the more we keep in line with the brand kit and the brand guide that uh, Angelina's, Angelina has been so gracious to remind us about. I don't want to take too much time, but just to recap what has been shared, uh, particularly by Madam Mary is about renewals. I don't know how much work we are doing as VPPRs on uh, encouraging people outside the Toastmasters space to join. But even as we share uh, renewals or everything about Toastmasters in the WhatsApp groups, let's not forget to get newbies in. And we can do this by sharing uh, all our work, everything important about Toastmasters and why anyone should join on our statuses on our LinkedIn and other social media apps. And we can also just bring a friend. Actually, I've found that bringing somebody from work who's never heard about Toastmasters or talking about Toastmasters to people who are not Toastmasters and dragging them to any meeting near them has really helped. I've been able to get a few friends outside the CBD space to join Toastmasters groups uh, in their in their, in their localities. I actually have somebody who will be visiting Juja Toastmasters. I'm glad the Juja VPPR is here. Also had someone visit Rongai. So there's so much we can do other than uh, just our WhatsApp, our VPPR WhatsApp group. Let's exploit that so that we encourage renewals. And then we need to amplify the leadership week. There's so much going on in that space. I only got to learn about it, believe it or not, Mary, two weeks ago. And uh, yeah, now that uh, I'm more aware about what is happening, we all as VPPRs should announce in our individual meetings and, and get people to plug in into what is going on. Also, this another summary, important summary, is to share our websites with uh, Mary so that she can add them on the district 114 page. So reach out to her with your web page and she'll add us onto it. And then to get stoked for the all in quarterly awards that is coming up on the 22nd of October. I've already saved the date, so don't forget. And with our Canva posters, keeping it simple, keeping it simple, less is more. Uh, this is the key takeaway from uh, Angelina, who was gracious to tell us whenever we're in doubt, less is more. To use not more than two fonts, to use not more, not too many pictures, and to try to remember the objective of Toastmasters, which is public speaking, leadership, and communication, and to always use the brand kit, the brand guide as our Bible, to always make sure those fonts and colors are in line with the brand identity of Toastmasters International. 
We wish you all the best in your VPPR journey. Juja Toastmasters, we're looking forward to your charter party. I hope that poster finally comes through. You can always reach out to each other. If you search for me in the VPPR or subgroup, just side chat. Uh, Tracy has also been very helpful in my uh, Toastmaster VPPR role. Whenever I'm in doubt, I always ask her and she shares feedback. We lament there together, we cry there together. So I hope each one of us has made a friend today and we can always reach out to each other in the middle of the night to, to shed those tears together. You'd be surprised that it's just a simple thing and one of us knows a hack but if we don't share our struggles or challenges, as Mary says, this is kind of a therapeutic learning session. So I've, I've made friends. I, I'll reach out to each one of you, Caroline. I'll reach out. Mary, I, I think I disturb her like at least three or four times a month. <laughs> but at least I, I know now Marcy. You're also very helpful from Tika Toastmasters whenever I have a question about the club, thank you. Liaison, nice to meet you as well. And uh, let's keep on reaching out to each other and look forward to seeing you all on the 28th of October. But before that, let's not forget the all-in quarterly awards. So other than that, I see Mary's hand is up. I'll, I'll just hand over to you to finally close it up for us. Thank you, Masi. Masi Chege, we are taking turns in... Um doing the TMOD for this session. So the winning poster is usually the person who comes in and helps to chair the, or help us with running the session. Uh, we already have templates and everything, so it's not really hard. I hope that you can uh, reach out and we can share with you uh, the agenda for the next meeting so that you can lead us through we want all our people to be, all our communicators to be good leaders. Um, so, yeah, I'll be checking you out uh, as I give you your prize. <laughs> um, yeah, so I hope everyone has filled in the link. I think it's just uh, five, six people left. So, I, um, yeah. I don't know. Would Wamboi like to say something? Wamboi, you've been very quiet. I hope you can finish. I feel like saying finish for us with a word of prayer. <laughs> I I have nothing to say today. I was a I was a guest and it was it was interesting um being here as a guest. Thank you for everything you've all done. Thank you. And thank you, Angelina. I think we can close the meeting a bit earlier and then, or if we have um, a, just a review session with the people who organize it, Vivian, Angelina, um, Tracy, one boy can be left behind so that we can, we can see how to plan better for our next meeting. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay, sure. Thank okay. you, everyone. Very that was, funny. yeah, that was really nice. Yeah. Um... Focus. Okay, so how do you think the meeting went, guys? Oh, you, <laughs> I can exhale. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I felt a little bit rushed and I, I must apologize, uh, Mary, for sending in the presentation a little bit too late, but I really had a, a hectic weekend. I'm a mother of two small kids and then I didn't have a nanny and there was just so much. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> then today at work from morning to around me, actually to around one, so much was going on like in person. 
so I, it was just difficult but um next time I'm Timothy, I'll try to hand in the presentation in good time so everyone can put in their slides in good time I just hope uh, it didn't disrupt too much everyone having to share their version of their PPT no no it worked out and thank you so much for doing a good job I think the hard work had been done in, in trying to think through what to do and obviously Angelina accepting to carry a reload so we we really I think it went well maybe one boy who was a fewer guest can tell us how it went <laughs> So, in my opinion, allow me to give critical feedback. Mm. I, I did think it went well, but I think there was a missed opportunity to have a practical session of how to actually make things on Canva. Um, I, f I felt that was what was missing. So like to open the Canva link and actually go through. Yeah, I, I think it would have uh, taken a bit of time because we we had scheduled, I think, 20 minutes. I think the presentation was done in like a shorter time. But uh, sorry, the end of the day, I'm trying to get comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I I think that's a good point. Maybe we can improve on that the next time. Um, anything else? I hope that it was a really good uh, meeting. I would say it was warmer. You know, mine was, I was even being called the brand police. So <laughs> <laughs> for me, it was just chap chap, please, people, let's do this, let's get this. And uh, I felt like this was really much warmer, much more of a hangout. Um, less of come here, let's do this VPPR job. So I felt like it was actually lifting to to be here to go through the moment of reflection, like uh, one word to reflect on the on the last week, the last month. And um, I must say, Vivian, you were very welcoming. I like the way that you took it. You might have felt that it was rushed. I know that as a VPPR or as an officer. You always have to think about doing things in time. Sometimes we do things last minute. But during the meeting, you went through it very chill. Um, even like uh, taking notes, this is how we do it nowadays, you know. So <laughs> I felt it was impressive. And Mary, I must say, this idea of hangouts is a really good idea. Um, it's not so formal, you know, it's just a chill hangout with people and getting to know what are the frustrations, what are the areas of challenges. And um, oh, I, I note that people are not responsive, which is one of the challenges that I also had. And also during crisis time, I think it's just every PRM is going to go through this. But you will always find like um, three, four, five people who are actually responsive out of like 50 or so. So not everyone will be responsive. And with time, it will get quieter as as you as people get tired through the first six months will be OK. Then after that, you will see it will get quieter. Um, but then it's good. People have shown up. That was a really good turn up. Um, and I also agree a little bit with what one boy you've said. Um, so every session, I think, should be different. Like myself, I really focused a lot on the technical stuff and it burned people out. So there were, at the end of the day, not many people are showing up. Uh, a good balance, um, I think, would be to have the technical part, but not too much of it. Um, and just one-on-one, -on -one, you know, when someone reaches us and says, okay, you know, seriously, I'm having a stress out time. But I know that also your time is limited for the one-to-one. -one. Uh, if you get 10 people who need one-to-one -one in a month, uh, that's a full-time job. You should get paid. So, <laughs> so I think a balance is good. Just today was really amazing, very chilled. And then maybe the next one, a little bit more technical, but not too much. And you don't want people to start zoning out like ah, by the way. 
I shouldn't have. I, I should have gone for that other, you know. It's 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 a Monday. People want to have a chill Monday. It's, you don't want to think too much. Uh, so it was really good. Really appreciate learning something new. And one thing that I noticed that you asked Vivian is about the photographs. We did have that challenge, like the, the audience in Kenya, you don't find so many Caucasians in an image. Uh, so we did try to solve that by getting fellow Toastmasters into a photo shoot. And we do have a quite a diverse group of people because it was during one of those officer trainings, the face-to-face -face training. So we had people from all over East Africa. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether, Mary, you have the link to that G drive. I'm trying to look for it, but then I think you need to access it through the district email address. The, if you can access the district Gmail, then you should be able to access the G drive. In there, you'll find a section with photographs, and that is where we put all of the photographs. They are quite good, more than 20 images really good diverse photography of East Africans. Um, yeah, so that it was really good. I learned a lot. Well done, May. My student, you're making me so proud. No, I am learning from you. Ah, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'd like to look for those photos with you because that G drive been reorganized numerous times. But um, I'll I'll check I'll check. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you all for that that information. Yeah, and Angeline, I didn't even find your session too technical. I actually learned a lot, and you know the the tips you shared were very organic. You know the emergent issues of EPPR faces once they have the hang of Canva, you know, so in as much as we didn't log into the link of like Canva and go through it, like, you know, step by step, the tips that you shared were quite, quite informative. So thank you. And you took us through very, you know, systematically. We, I, I sincerely learned a lot and I appreciate. You I have just a have a confidence, Vivian. Yeah. You should have met me a year ago or two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> should have met me a month ago. <laughs> oh, but yeah, we are learning together and it's 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 quite a joy. I had a question, Mary, and mine was uh, just a suggestion on whether we can put up a poll in the WhatsApp group. So we share what we learned in the first hangout last month and what we've learned today. Then we ask uh, other VPPRs what they would prefer, what they would really want. We give them three or so topics on what they would really want uh, to be the technical bit of the next Hangout. This way, they all, we take the majority vote, you know, then we know, we understand what is really the challenge for a majority of the VPPRs then that can be the, the learning session for the next Hangout. I don't know what you think about that. Actually, it will make them more involved and engaged even way before the, the Hangout happens. And then for Monday, today was the pull-up banner challenge, which I've been a very key attendee of. And the one of the topics was on mentorship. I know that um, his name is Dr. Rubia, most of the time records, but it clashes with that meeting. I think they also host theirs on Mondays. So what happens to VPPRs who want to be in two places at the same time and can't do it like Baron or Chola? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I spoke to Kevin about it and he has a full calendar of activities for the whole year, which is perfect. So what I'll do is uh, I'll talk to him and uh, get that calendar. Then we can discuss the Monday uh, because even he was saying his is the fourth Monday. So ours was like, ours is the last. I, I wonder when, how many Mondays are not the fourth one. <laughs> so we can, we can uh, because we know when ours are, 
and then I also saw VPs are having their training, which is perfect because that's the way it should be. Um, all groups should go through more training over and above the the COT to improve them. So I will, I'll just check with Rubia and then I'll I'll put on the group so that we um align on the dates. We can even have a calendar and create um what people are what what we're teaching, what we're sharing, and. The, and Angelina, you don't have to be, you don't have to come just once. <laughs> so we can share with you the calendar and you can pick another topic, maybe somewhere in January. Um, yeah, and, and we populate that calendar. Um, yeah. So I think that's what I'll I'll focus on for before the next week. That sounds inviting. You're making me blush now. It's like, oh, I become a regular. Maybe I should join those masters again. Uh, that would be lovely. Renewal month. Renewal month. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> Strategies, yeah. huh? Yeah. Yeah. With with had uh, advance notice, definitely. I, I can always try and be flexible. Next year sounds perfect. Yeah. So next year is good. When people are getting tired, uh, we will <laughs> we'll create that. Uh Tracy, you haven't said anything. Anything you'd like to say? You're in that other meeting with Rubia. Yeah. The mentoring. No, it's just there in the background. It's been because I kept dropping off from this one and I feel so guilty. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> no worries, my dear. No I missed worries. a big chunk of it. So I really don't necessarily have feedback. <clears throat> but I think we should do more as one boy said we should do more demos. I think that would be really, really good, especially to maintain interest for some people who are quote unquote mad, have gone belly a kilam to and are hoping to learn. We should be able to surprise people. Okay. Okay then. Um. I think we end it there. He said that. The mentor maybe was talking so okay. much about their journey. Yeah. And I think we, we end it there so that we the have energy for the next one. So my question comes in that. Sorry. Vivian, you did so well. Congratulations. Yeah, thank, you. thank you so much. Very, very well. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I almost said no <laughs> on Saturday. Then I thought, let me not do this to Mary. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. I'm glad I, oh, I saw that through. I know, oh, I know. You have missed out. I know. You did, okay, I, 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 was, I was so disappointed when I dropped out. I was like, ah, all those nuggets. They went to you <laughs> Yeah, I think the thing is just showing up. You no, know, just mm -hmm. showing up one day at a time, no matter the challenges, showing up as you are. Yeah, as yeah. I am. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, we are going to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Bye. 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 And a good Bye. start to the week. Yeah. Yes. Yes, to you to Angelina. Nice to meet you and Ramboy as well. Have a wonderful time. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Ramboy. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye.